Okay, welcome uh, to the second lecture this week. Uh, last time I considered distributions, Fourier transforms of distributions and so on. And we already had one example that was uh, the Hunkel function, the Hunkel transform. And uh, I want to consider a second example and that's rotationally symmetric functions. And this will lead to a geometric interpretation of inversion formulas for the radon transform. Uh, unfortunately, I need another tool for this. And I need, now this time I need to grab something from uh, that you may be familiar with from function theory or ordinary differential equations. And uh, that's Bessel functions. And uh, since I'm not sure that everybody knows what it is, let me give you a very short, very brief introduction. And uh, I will later just use uh, the box that I'm preparing now. OK, um, assume that uh, f is a function from c to c and uh, define the complex function by f of z as e to the x times z minus 1 over z times one half. So this is a one over z and this is one over two. Uh, and uh, let x usually in R fixed. Now, uh, defining this, um, there's a one over z up there. So we have something like e to the one over z. So definitely f, f has an essential singularity at zero, a pole, pole of order infinity. But everywhere else, it's just holomorphic. It's differentiable, everything. So uh, the oops, <laughs> excuse me. So uh, the Laurent series exists, and uh, we can write it as f of z equals to sum over all n j n of x z to the n, where g n of x are now the um, the uh, Laurent coefficients, and uh, of course they depend on x since x was a part of f. OK, we call Jn of x the Bessel function of the first kind. And uh, we are interested in this lecture only for integer n's larger or equal to 0. I don't know if that matters. And x probably larger or equal to 0. That doesn't matter, but you'll see it. OK, um, I'm mentioning that because there's also fractional um, Bessel functions, which we're not really interested in. Now, um, an important lemma for us is uh, what happens if we want to compute these uh, the co coefficients in that uh, Laurent series? Now, um, using the Cauchy integral theorem, we have that uh, we can represent Jn of x as 1 over 2 pi integral over a contour that includes 0 e to the x times 1 half times z minus 1 over z times 1 over z to the n plus 1 dz. That's Cauchy's integral theorem. OK, uh, we choose as a contour uh, a complex circle around 0 with radius 1. So we take z of phi as e to the i phi. z prime is then e to the ei phi. And of course, phi must be in 0 to pi. And I already note that uh, in this case, 1, o 1 over 2 z minus 1 over z, that's 1 over 2 times e to the i phi minus e to the minus i phi, which is exactly the same as uh, i times the sine of phi. OK, um, so let me plug this in. This is 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to pi. Now, um, the a, I, for this z minus 1 over z, I get an i times phi. So that's i to the i times x times sine of phi. And for this one, I have e to the minus i n plus 1 times phi. And uh, I get the derivative for the integration. And that's times i to the e i phi d phi. OK, now. Um, make a uh, look at what that is. And the, the i goes away. So we have 1 over 2 pi, integral over 2 pi, e to the i x sine phi. Now we have i e to the minus i phi here, e to the i phi here. That goes away as well. So this is the same as e to the i x sine phi minus i n phi d phi. 
Um, we'll use that formula also in a little bit, uh, in a, a slightly different notation. So if you make the shift from phi to phi plus pi over two, then the sine becomes the cosine over here. And uh, um, yeah, we get a, a factor of i to the minus n over two pi. And that's uh, another useful relation. I don't know which of the ones we're actually going to use. But uh, this one says that gn of x can be rep represented as an integral. And this is the one. You could also take this as the definition. Um, now, jn is interesting in uh, ordinary differential equations because uh, it solves Bessel's uh, differential equation, and Bessel's uh, differential equation is x squared times the second derivative of f plus x times the first derivative plus x squared minus n squared f is zero. And um, yeah, I tried to do it. Uh, I always got the constants, constants wrong. Um, so the trick is you take this one over here, do partial integration, and then what comes up is the same as f prime and f double prime. And uh, it's just a lot of computation and uh, you find that this is true. I think there's a way of directly doing that with a generating function, but I didn't find out how. Okay. Um, then um, there's also a series representation of uh, the Bessel um, of, of the Bessel function, and um, it's the one over here. So J n of x is sum over all m this time and from zero to infinity minus one to the m x over two times one uh, to the n plus two m times one over m facultad times n plus m for gamma function of m plus one times gamma, uh, gamma function of n plus m plus one. Okay, um, from what I, what I just said, uh, you already note, uh, uh, note that now it's also possible to uh, define this for, uh, for fractional n, uh, just replacing this over here, factorial just replacing factorial by <laughs> the gamma function. It's not a term that I'm using very often. Okay, um, okay. so um, how do you prove that, that at least for integer n, uh, this is correct? Well, you easily find that uh, this one also solves Bessel's equation, just plug it in and you see that uh, the coefficients solve the right equation. So, uh, and then, um, you find that at zero, uh, the both solution coincide. So j zero of zero is one, and j n of zero is zero for n larger for n larger than zero. I should. Yeah, j n of zero is zero. Yeah, for for n larger than zero, and um, yeah, and uh, that means they uh, solve the same initial value problem. Uh, you might say, okay, but that's a second order uh, differential equation. Yes, that's true, but uh, do you, uh, there's a thing. There's only one the, um, solution that uh, is continuous at zero. You can prove that, and so they must coincide. Okay, and, and the other one has a, a singularity at zero, so that's the only one. Okay, um, the last property that we will use is a Debye's relation. And I do that by showing you some plots, some graphs of uh, the Bessel function. Now, this is J0. Uh, I've already said it starts at one, and uh, then it looks a little bit like the sink. Right, so that's in fact true. It behaves a lot like the sink function. Um, it um, has a, looks like the sine and the frequency is, uh, and the amplitude is going down. Um, we've uh, this is J five, and uh, it does also it also does what we expect. Uh, it starts at zero. That's what I noted here. And uh, there's one thing. It's almost equal to zero on that small interval over here. And uh, I think it's hard to see, but that's the, roughly the interval from zero to five. And then it goes, it, it becomes bigger. And uh, this is J10 and uh, same thing. I mean, it's almost zero here in this interval around zero up to 10. 
and then it becomes bigger. And that's what is known as a device relation. And uh, that says that Jn of x is roughly zero for x smaller than n. And uh, you see, well, it's, it's not completely true because when I approach n, in fact, Jn of x can be quite large. But um, when we use it, uh, we'll take note of that. But um, the simple, um, just to put it in a simple way, then Jn of x is roughly zero for x smaller than n. This is something you can actually keep in mind. Um, I have no proof for that. It's, it's not that simple. And uh, I think you find it in Bell uh, in Bell's book on special functions, which I don't have available right now. Maybe in Giudoni, I don't know, but uh, at least you find the relation uh, everywhere. So I believe that it's correct. Okay, so uh, now we have everything in place, I hope, and we'll get to the Fourier transform of um, rotationally symmetric functions.